like giving people the info that they may not have uh, like combed through your website to find out um give them a reason give them value give them information because people are just like so hungry for information hey everyone thank you for pouring on in we appreciate you as you're jumping in to the zoom drop in the chat where you guys are, are watching from we like to know where where our people are located it's kind of fun to see everyone from all over the country all over the world believe it or not cool lots of great lots of great places florida texas seattle more florida awesome 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 let's just give it a sec because People are still pouring in, and then we're going to get started. I don't want people to miss it. But thanks for joining us. And if you guys have questions throughout the uh, discussion, just drop it in the Q&A portion of the Zoom chat. Because if you drop it in the regular chat, it kind of gets a little mixed up, and we might miss it. So there's a Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. And if you have any questions, drop them there. Turn on my ring light. There we go. Perfect. Look less shadowy. All right. Awesome. Let's get started. So my name is Nick Baldwin. I am the co-founder of Lab Coat Agents. And we have a pretty, uh, pretty great webinar interview discussion for you today around the, the NAR ruling, the commission lawsuit. Um, everyone is scrambling and they're, they're worried, they're confused, they're feeling all sorts of emotions. They don't know what to make of it or how they should pivot their business. But it definitely sent shockwaves across the industry. And so while many of you guys have spent um, your time you know, thinking about contracts, commission splits, Lofty, who we have with us today, previously Chime, now Lofty, has been heads down focused on identifying the most important things agents should do now to set themselves up for success starting, I think starting now and not just July, starting now and then into the future. So we've got Chief Strategy Officer Brian, I'm going to pronounce, I'm going to, I'm going to totally brutalize your name, Hoy, Hoyleman. Perfect. Dead oh, on. wow. Very rare, but dead and, on. And I, I know how to sound out words. <laughs> and Nick, you are the vice president of, I want to say client success. That's yep. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Okay. Nick, what's your last name, Nick? Fiedler. Oh, Nick you're not even going to try mine. Okay. What? Got it. You're not going to try mine. You went with Hoyleman, but you didn't want well, to try I don't have your name. I didn't have your name on that sheet that I was no, no reading worries. my notes from. But um, yeah, so we appreciate you guys being here. We're going to just kind of jump into some things that you guys can be doing differently um, in your business to just kind of shift. That's what's so great about being a realtor, right? Like if you work for yourself, nothing has to go up a ladder in order to get things changed. You can just do it, change on a dime. So Brian, I'll let you, I'll just let you kind of kick it off. I know you have some initial thoughts you want to get off your chest finally. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, so I'm Brian Hoyleman as I'm Chief Strategy Officer, longtime uh, technology uh, coach, trainer, whatever you want to call me, uh, Nick, in the space We're going back over close to 20 years now. So one of the things I'd say to all the listeners here is there's probably a lot of people that have uh, worked with me in the past on this call. I know that Lab Coats has a lot of my previous teams that I've worked with and coach through technologies and things like that. What I'd say is for anybody that's on this call, 20 years in the space, we've all seen things like this. We've seen crashes. We've seen COVID. We've seen even the biggest real estate, uh, you know, early 2000s where the market completely crashed and the world kept going. And so one of the things that's important to understand about the commission lawsuit is the cure to all that is that as an agent, it's a people's business and you have value to people in this process. And that value is going to be in that ability to create relationships is always going to be the thing that wins this space. And it always puts you in a position of need and value. And I think we've lost that a little bit over the years of 
buying, uh, trying to buy transactional leads and just buying leads and saying, I, I want an Apple, I want a lead and I want to transact. And those days with the new commission is over. We need to go back to relationship building and value building within our tech stacks and our marketing or advertising. And when it comes to that, uh, that is the biggest and most important thing we do is go back to old school and not just think about buying a bunch of internet leads and hope I get a deal or buying a bunch of leads and say, hey, um, you know, are they ready to transact? If they're not ready to buy, I don't want to deal with them because that's why we're here. Why we're in this commission lawsuit is that people didn't feel they were getting the value for the work that the industry was doing. So we need to start changing the way that we conduct ourselves. And this is a starting point. I love to talk about this, but that's my message is go back to old school relationship building as a starting point and buy products that allow that to happen. Yeah. You know, I agree with that because I feel like we got really caught up in, I need leads, 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 leads. And we just became very transactional and we forgot about building meaningful relationships with the people that already know us and love us. Exactly. And there's still need, you still need lead, leads, leads, but we need to, sure. this whole webinar is about changing the way that we go about our value offer to those leads. In fact, we need, and we'll go into that during this webinar. I'll let everybody kind of, but yeah, that's, I can't agree more with what you said. So uh, what do you think an agent is going to need to be doing? Like what parts of their business do you think are going to be the most drastic changes? So I think within the lawsuit and everything that I've talked to uh, with people in the space is we don't know how that's going to, is it going to be the bot? Is it going to be the seller? Are they going to have to do a 6% is going away? None of that's defined. You can still, you can still ask for 6%. So it just means that the, at the, at the, at the surface level, the listing agent is going to have a is more power, has more power in this um, moving forward to an extent. But if the, if the buyer's agent, or person representing the purchase side, they have to have an agreement now. That's what the lawsuit's saying. You have to have some sort of agreement that designates a purchase agreement. And to me, that's a, a, the best thing about this lawsuit. Because before it was kind of like a free for all with whoever, you know, the buyer would go in and jump around. Now you have to have that nurture at the beginning stage to create a value prop that they want to sell, they want you to represent them on the purchase side. And yeah. You have to have that agreement. So the whole point of this is now we have that agreement, two agreements we're merging together in a negotiation. That's what's going to happen. Now, how that commission gets paid between, I know as a buyer buying a house, I'm not going to pay a buyer agent a commission out of my own pocket, plus a down payment. That's never going to happen. That's going to weaken it. So maybe the loan officers come in. That's probably, it's going to be a, a situation where loans now will open that up a little bit too, where the loan officer becomes even more important and allows for that, that commission to be put into some sort of finance or part of the loan process. I've heard that happening. That's a trend. So what I would say is that what we're going with moving forward is we better have a complete ecosystem search to settlement. And that's what this theme is about today, where at the early point of search, I create a relationship and put people on a path to purchase a home through an agreement of value. And I better have a lender partner that I work with in that because the, the stronger relationship I have to the purchase process through the early stage to the purchase is what's going to earn that commission on the purchase side. On the listing side, we better think creatively about what type of commission splits we're offering to get that listing. Because if we can't run that into the deal, doing like a 1% listing and represent the purchase side of the side is probably not going to happen anymore. Or flat fee brokers are going to be struggling because where's that dollar going to come from? Where, where's the money? It's always going to come off the house somehow. So how's it going to come into the loan or what? But ultimately, uh, for today's call, search to settlement is the driving topic. And that means that the day they start searching, meaning you capture them in your ecosystem, you never want that person to leave your ecosystem. You're, you're just competing for a restaurant. You want them coming back for more, coming back for more, coming back for more, even if they're not ready to purchase. And so in doing that, we need, to, we need systems in place that actually nurture people longer, keep them engaged longer, work longer with us, and we're more involved in that process because we have permission to contact. So if we think search for settlement with the new TPCA rules and all the different rules, realtors, if they generate that lead, they're the only ones that have legal permission to contact that lead. 
Zillow doesn't get that in the beginning. They don't unless they register. The, the, the value the agent has on this call to the commission lawsuit is the size of their database and the permission and nurture convert and have a relationship. And that is not waiting around for a referral. It's building a farm and that you have the ability to pick your own fruit. And if you don't have that full ecosystem, you're not growing your database long-term, then we're going to have trouble moving forward. And how do we do that? I also think that, you know, a buyer agent's going to have to definitely, um, you know, if, if a buyer is going to agree to pay a commission, which they never had to do before, there's, there usually, usually a buyer would, 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 would find an agent and they would sh see the house and they would just end up staying with that agent. Right. But now if they're having to sign, sure, they could sign something and cancel it. Right. Someone mentioned that in the, yeah. in the, in the but most people won't do that. Most people That's won't sign something and then quickly cancel it after they see a house. Most people just don't, it's too much of a hassle, right? They yeah. don't want to have that conversation. So as a buyer agent, your conversations, I feel with even people on your, who are looking on your website that you haven't even met your conversations even if it be, even if it's a one way conversation for a while are going to have to be very different. Like instead of saying, Hey, I found this house. Do you want to go see it? You can say, this is just, I'm just spitballing. Hey, I found this house that's similar to the other houses you've been looking for. I just wanted to give you a little bit of information about it. You may have missed it. It's near schools. It's near highways. It's near transportation. It has this, it has that like giving people the info that they may not have uh, like, combed through your website to find out um give them a reason give them value give them information because people are just like so hungry for information so there's gonna be a little bit more legwork on the buyer agent side in terms of those things and if you've already been doing it then great because it's not going to just be jumping up and showing a house anymore and nope. and it's a great opportunity to create like a kick-ass buyer um representation presentation like you would go in and get a listing you'd have a listing presentation you now need a buyer presentation because you're taking a buyer listing when before you may not have been thinking that way that's a that's exactly right and when we think about though the way and i just want to preface this to the transition to kind of uh what some of the th talking points we have but uh, one of the things i would say on that nick is that as as an agent going into this one thing that we've been doing that I think I'm going to share with the group here and I've shared before and I also have a universal script for this if we get a chance at the end to kind of think about a script and way to talk to consumers to put you in a consultive nature from the very beginning um, at the end of this call that will help everybody in this call which is they can use it it, uh, it works it's something that will work and it's perfect for this uh, time that we're in um, but uh, what I would say to that is we have to get away from buyer agent and seller agent. Even the term buyer or seller, and this transitions to our talk track, is for now 20 years I'm going, I don't understand that, that logic. There's no if then, there's no secondary commission. You're just an agent. You got to get a commission somehow. So uh, somebody, and there's two types of people we deal with because we're people. We deal with people that are renting and we deal with people that are homeowners. And you want them to transact with you and you want to provide value. And you're their homeowner. So homeowners also want to buy. They become a seller when they start looking to buy two years in advance. So if we're going at leads thinking in the early stage, hey, you're a buyer, you want to buy. That's the wrong language to use. It's the wrong communication. We have to be consultive. We have to get in a relationship with them and we can represent them on the list side and on the purchase side more often. So when we talk about, as we get into the marketing and advertising, we want to focus on creating relationships with homeowners and renters. Now the homeowner represents four to six X value because I can get that listing commission for sure, but I can also get a purchase commission too. I have that relationship with that homeowner. The house is the asset. It's not a seller. It's the home itself and who lives there in that market. People that are purchasing outside of a market coming into a market, I better have a long-term relationship because they're living outside of this market. They're moving in. So it takes longer for that person to purchase. I need to have show homes, videos, create value that you're talking about. Private videos you send somebody in New York that wants to live in Florida. Things like that. Virtual tours that you create for yourself 
ahead of time. So these are things to think about as you're not just a buyer agent or seller agent. You're just an agent that's consulting with people and helping them transact. Yeah. Just a quick question, and then we can move on to the next point. There's a question in the in the Q and A portion here because you you're not going to be allowed as a listing agent to indicate how much the buyer side is going to get if they're going to get anything. You're not going to be able to input that into the MLS. Someone's asking in terms of lofty your products. Will you have a field that will allow agents to show the commissions offered by the listing broker or seller? Or does that just go in like comments somewhere? You can't. Yeah. The thing that you, can, if I publish it IDX wise, I'm just doing the same thing. They're not going to allow that. Now there are some IDX saying, well, they will allow that in there. And yes, we are working with that. Um, we right now, as we speak. So the answer to that question is yes. If there's, a, if it's allowed. Okay. So it's not a, so there's nothing stopping you, but yes, I mean, technically as a law, if you send an email out to someone saying, hey, we're offering this as a commission behind the scenes, you might be technically that and, and doing something that's not going to be allowed. So the question becomes, is you have to state on that buyer agreement what your commission would be. The seller has to have it. You're going to get together and you're going to negotiate. So everybody says it's three and three. That means it's total six. Maybe the seller's not willing to do a 6%. The seller agent's going to have to negotiate down or up. Welcome to the way the world was uh, 25 years ago when there was no internet. And the listing agent just got the commission and somebody came in and they could negotiate what there was. There was no posting this. The reality is we're back to old school real estate, uh, Nick. That's where we're at. Yeah. That's how it's always been for 200 years. So the question becomes, you just have, it's just going to be another negotiation, which it's great. I think it's great that I can go to a buyer, represent them in a concierge and say, I'm going to represent your interest exclusively. This yeah. is why I have a list of uh, buy power analysis. I've done this. I'm doing this. I'm negotiating. I think that's an empowerment that people on this call should be going. This is great. Let me put that together. Now, let me create a whole program around generating prospects that I can then provide that value to that want to use me. Totally. And so we talked about how things may, things are going to change in your life, but let's jump over to Nick, the other Nick, Nick number two. Sorry, dude. You're Nick number two today. Number um, two. Great. How your day, I'll take, I'll take it. how your day is not going to change, how things are not going to change for you. So let's talk yeah. about that. Absolutely. So first, anybody that's in the chat right now, uh, if you know your little emoticons, how many of you were uh, in this industry during COVID? Can you give me a thumbs up, a smiley face or whatever thing you could find in there? Yep, 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 yep. Cool. So remember when they said when COVID happened that real estate was going to die, everything, it was the end of the world. Uh, <laughs> We're never going to be able to show another house. Yeah. How are we going to do this? Uh, we adapt and change, but also... Uh, the people that are in this group, every single one of you, uh, it looks like uh, 43 years. Uh, yeah. So every single one of you have kind of been through these changes before, whether it's a global pandemic that says you can't show a house or not. The people that kind of survive are the people that keep doing what they're doing every day. So I'm the I'm the positive mindset and just kind of the easygoing person. And Brian is is my uh, is my strong arm that tells you what you really have to do every day. But the first part of what you have to do every day is do exactly what you're doing. Nothing changes in your day to day. You still have to do the things that you have to do for every single client. You have to provide them value on every single email you send. You have to provide them information. Um, when we talk about a couple things that will change, like you have to put them on an automated smart plan that is particular to what they want to do. Your database is the strongest arsenal that you have uh, as an agent. It always will be. And the good thing about a database is there are no bad leads in your database, unless it's incorrect information. But people, people put in fake phone numbers or email addresses. But if it's accurate information, someone will be buying or selling a house at any point in their life. Um, I, I'm, I'm 41 years old. I'm a full-time renter. Uh, I am on five <laughs> smart plans 
And the second uh, that my wife and I are about to buy a house, I know who I'm going with. Well, I know who I'm five going smart with. plans. Who are you going with? It, <laughs> we're not going to say it. We're not going to say it on a recorded line here. Uh, <laughs> it's Nick at lofty.com. So you guys can put me on your smart plans as well. I love um, it. <laughs> but, but the thing is, everyone is a lead that you have. And they, they are buyers and sellers. Every and single everybody, seller not is a just buyer. that, everybody knows someone who wants to buy or sell. So like there's been instances where I have followed up with someone for so long that they couldn't believe that I did that. And they didn't buy with me, but they referred me to people. And to, to I, Nick's, to both you guys' yeah. point, every realtor is a lead themselves. Everybody you come in contact with, everybody you go to the grocery store with, every pickleball tournament you're in, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Nothing's changing on that. Nothing is changing. 88% of people purchase a home through a real estate agent right now. If, if the world was going to end tomorrow and Zillow gets all the traffic in the world, only four to 7% of people even transact through that re- right. through Zillow's resource. So anyways, back to next point. No. Yeah. So, so the biggest thing is that we don't change what we do, right? You're providing a value. You're providing a valuable service. Um, even the emails that I get, I get emails in four or five areas. I'm not going to tell you where they are because you'll all put me on your smart list too. But I get emails that are telling me about the market, how it's changing, what the big, what the biggest deals are there. Um, what if something's gone up or down? Is this an investment property? I get all of that. Everything. You, one of the things that you need to make sure that you have is some system. Lofty does it. We're a full platform. Um, but you have to have something that's going to work those for you because once you start accumulating the number of leads that you have, you have to work them in a way that provides value. And I don't unsubscribe from anything that I have because right now it tells me the market in the area that I'm looking for. It tells me when the best time to buy is. I get emails when the uh, interest rate changes. I get all of this content and it's valuable to me because it can let me know. I get an email that says, hey, if you bought this house, even if you didn't want to stay in Phoenix, Arizona, here's what happens when you rent that house out. Here's how much money you could make as passive income. That, that kind of value your clients are going to love. So, so the first part is what I would say is you have to keep doing what you're doing, provide value, understand that you are doing, like, if it's not you, they're going to go to somebody else. So you have to still be in the game. The second part that I would say is you need to double down, just like the people that did this during, during COVID, same time right now, you have to double down on your ad spend, regardless oh, of who you do it with. We can help you out with that. Happy to do that. We don't have to help you out with that. You can, but the thing is, you have to build your database and you have to find a way that's collecting you leads that are important. So typically you'd have buyer and seller leads, right? You can go in, if you go into Google right now, it's like, what do I want? Well, most people on Google, Bing, whoever you have, are going to say, um, looking for a house in for here in Phoenix, it's Willow District in Phoenix. Okay, that's spot downtown. It's kind of a nice spot. Um, they're going to put that in. Not a lot of people put in selling a house in the Willow District because that's not how they've already, they already have the realtor typically. So you're going to find a whole lot less people that are searching for that. What, what changes is that you're going to spend more money for the person that's saying, I'm selling my house in this area. And you're going to be able to get a very cheap lead for someone saying, I'm looking for a house in this area. So as you think about your lead spend, um, there's a lot that you can do. I would shift, if it were me, I would shift to seller lead gen, understand how to grab that lead, funnel it in. Brian will have some, he's got a lot of great ideas on, on what you do with this because every buyer's a seller, every seller's a buyer. Um, but I would funnel more of your leads into the seller bucket right now. They're going to cost more. They're going to close a little bit less. A seller lead, regardless of who they're from, Zillow's a little bit different. But if you're just looking at Google across the board, you close about 2% of your leads that you get in there for buyers. If, you, if you're if you just nothing special, if you just signed up for a bunch of leads, 2%. So build your budget off of that, what you can do. Um, seller's going to be closer to about a 1%. However, uh, you're going to have a little bit 
of a of a shorter time that that leads in. There's still going to be a six to nine month lead, but it's going to be a little bit shorter. But your sellers are you're going to be able to squeeze a little bit more out of them because you're going to have some buying information because they're selling and they're buying. You're also going to get that kind of sphere of influence around them. But while you do that, the other piece that you can do in your ads, which is important, regardless if you're getting buyer or seller leads, is brand awareness campaigns. Um, everyone's still going to buy and sell houses. It doesn't matter. If the interest rate goes up to 10%, someone's still going to move, have to buy a house. Um, they're going to figure out how they have to do it. They're going to figure out how they can budget it. But you're still going to have to uh, have your name out there because the person that they're looking at, I can tell you the five realtors in downtown Phoenix because I see their ads online. I see them on a park bench. I see them... Uh, like brand awareness is probably one of the best things that you can do. It's it's always a good thing to do, as you all know, but it's even a better thing to do when we get into these kind of tumultuous situations where somebody's like, well, I don't know if, I don't know how this is going to affect my team. We have to grow the awareness in the Phoenix area or wherever you're at. So my biggest message, uh, I'll, I'll toss it over because everyone else on the call, uh, Nick, Nick squared and, and Brian are, are, well, um, I just had, um, really... I just wanted to make a comment. So yes, um, you know, one of the things that agents tend to cut back on, um, mostly during times of uncertainty is their marketing spend. It's the biggest mistake they make. It's like, literally, I could tell you right now for 20 years, I don't care what thing you do when things are going bad in the market, the real estate market goes better. So in other words, people drink more when they're happy, drink, drink even more when they're sad. The worst thing you can do is we're all fishing in the same pond. Every agent that works for a broker, Nick, competes against each other in the same brokerage. You know that in Keller Williams. You're competing against every agent. You're yeah. competing against everybody next door. You're competing against your friends and family. So the worst thing you could do is take your fishing poles out of the water. That's right. the Ooh, worst like thing you could do. The second thing that Nick and I, and I know Dick's talking in the language we all listen to, but the reality of online leads versus people leads, let's just talk about that. So I'm reading all the questions we have and people are, the questions are the mortgage. Another gentleman talked about putting in the closing costs. These are all things that are going to be ways that we are transacting, that we provide value. That's a value to the consumer because they don't know. It doesn't change the fact if you don't have anybody to talk to. You could be the best rules in the world, but if you don't have anybody to share those percentages with and share the expertise on how they purchase, because if you're not answering the consumer's questions about as a person that might want to buy, but if I own a home, which is about 30 to 70%, depending on the market, if you don't understand what that means, that who purchases versus what's like, I live in Southern California in Carlsbad. I guarantee you there's not many first time renters that are buying a $1.5 million home. Mm -hmm. They're just not doing it. They own a home somewhere, they're buying a home somewhere. So remember that your market is going to be a 60, 40, 70, 30. But to Nick's point, your database is critical. So what's going to change? And let's say commissions do drop. That means I have less money to spend on what? Yeah. And that's I what also, I want to transition to. Yeah. What? Well, I just wanted to say one quick thing before you transition. Um, you did make a good point, uh, other Nick. You made a great point about about brand awareness so many agents just kind of ignore that right like you need to be running campaigns that are not asking for business that are just giving information and value and mix that with lead capture like think about it does does do companies like apple ever ask us to go buy an iphone no they never do they just tell us that the iphone is out they don't say go buy it now right so you have to be similar to that whereas your you're giving info. Maybe it's a blog. Maybe it's an ebook. If it's an ebook, you can ask for information, but don't make it a lead capture. Don't make it like a forced registration. Make it like a landing page, like a lead magnet. You know, ten things to know. A click funnel. Home. You know, something along those along those lines. But don't make everything you put out there about capturing the leads. If you're running campaigns to the same type of audience. The same people that are seeing your brand awareness ads are then going to see your lead capture ads. And when they find figure out that they trust you enough or they think you're giving them value, then they'll give you their info. 
another way to put this, Nick, and, and whether it's the type of leads you're doing, and we'll talk a little bit as we go into the type of marketing that's going to drive better results, yeah. which is what I really want to talk about, and 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 having a, a, a system in place that does the things that you need to do from search to settlement. But brand is not, I'm an agent, and I know what I'm doing, and this is right. my name. Your brand is not your name. People in the car business don't sell the car salesman. They sell the asset that you're talking about and the value of the car to the per person purchasing. They're selling that. Your brand is what you do as an agent and the way you're selling what the value you offer. When they see that, they're going to see your name. It's not, I'm a ruler and I'm really smart. It's, hey, as a buyer, have you ever had a list power or a, uh, what I call a, a buy side power analysis or a list power analysis or things like these topics. What's a list power analysis? Well, it shows you in the new age of this commission split, how to list your home with power and be a power lister of your home. I'm selling that. I'm not selling I'm Brian Hoyleman. By the way, I'm an agent. I'm not selling I'm Brian Hoyleman. I'm a smart and I understand the market. I'm selling a value that I provide through my name, not myself. 30 to 40% of consumers, when you market yourself, will leave their ad or leave your website. 30 to 40%. When you tip back, when you advertise value, you're bringing what I call pull, pull marketing versus push marketing. And that's Nick, what I want to, uh, them to understand from here. Pull means you're pulling people in with value of content. Push means you're pushing yourself out there and saying, I'm pushing something out towards you. You want to pull people into your net, not push people away. So what, what are those things that you can do from a brand standpoint that pulls people in? Would you like to know or learn more about this? How can I do this? Asking a question instead of saying, throwing a bunch of content out there and hope they come back to me. So push, pull. We want to pull people in. We don't want to push them away. That's the easiest. Will this content reel people in on a fishing or am I throwing a rock in the water? Trying to hit a fish. We want to pull them in. So that's one aspect. So what we need are systems that are where the lead came in and it originated. It lives in that ecosystem forever. Right now, agents have 17 different spots they get a lead from. They don't have one system that generates 30 to 40 different types of lead funnels in one platform. They buy leads from over here. They buy leads from over here. And they're not where the lead originated, where the lead started from, where it grew. You need as agents to earn this, we need to grow our own food. We need to grow our own crops, farming, farm Google, farm for sellers, farm for homeowners, farm parties, farm pickleball, farm your environment, farm your community. You need, as an agent, we need a system that we can create a farm and ecosystem around our network and our market and our expertise. And just throwing leads in the CRM and thinking drip campaigns are going to work, that's not going to work moving forward. You need a start to search, list alerts, AI to engage on those alerts, ask questions, provide value, live chat, monitor 5,000 leads at one time, keep them alive. These are all things that agents should be focused on that Lofty provides as a full ecosystem. The question then is how do you get access to that and affordability? So right now we're going to have situations where teams are going to be more dominant. And so agents that can't necessarily afford uh, to your commissions cut to be a lone ranger. Maybe you start a co-op where you share in a system, you share costs, but you still remain independent and private. So I'm going to illustrate that really quick. Within Lofty, agents can create co-ops within their own personal brokerage where they don't have a team, but they can say have five agents that share in costs that dominate and they can run independent private instances. So in other words, I can have five agents on the system sharing the cost, but my system is private and we're not sharing any lead volume. All leads stay private, independent, and I could have an independent private system, but not pay full price. A lot of, there's not a lot of systems out there that can do that within brokerages. I know Nick knows that, but there are systems that can do something similar. Uh, teams, being able to build teams and provide agents the value, what I call, is turn your lead team into a lead army. So the team leaders providing leads down and hoping agents close it, whereas why not having each agent on your team generate 30 to 50 leads per month on top of what the team leader does? Churn your system into a lead army, a seller army. Brokers that are listening, how do you churn your agents in the seller army for you? How do you churn the agents in the lead armies for you? 
So agents are always focused on leads and converting them. So the systems like Alofty, which is search to settlement that has 30 or 40 different ways that agents can generate leads that are private for their team leader, or the team leader can drive leads down to agents. Having a complete system to run a business where everybody is creating wealth is the future when it comes to this commission lawsuit. That is the future. And building that database. So if they have some questions around that, we can talk about that as we go. So Lofty, and I can bring up other competitors that are out there. There's about maybe three in the market that you can do this with. I don't want to make this about competitors, but there's not a lot of options out there that allow for every single segment of a business to create, become a lead army. And that's what we really need. Love it. Good stuff. Hey, so can we talk a little bit about um, why you think that teams are, give us a little more information, a little more insight into like why teams are the future in this situation? Yeah, because at the end of the day, the, the, this name team doesn't mean like team leader, it just means a group, right? A people. Okay, gotcha. And so what we need to think about is when you look at broker business down, brokers should be providing, are they providing leads in the future? Well, that, they're not gonna have a lot of money spent on commission because they get the least they get the least amount of revenue off, off, a, off a transactional part, right? So what's going to happen is we need to attract either teams into a brokerage that are providing a way to co-op, to create mm -hmm. ecosystems that are independent, private, and portable. So agents need independency, privacy, and portability. They're never going to live in one place all the time. So what ends up happening is I'm a basic, an average agent that does six to seven transactions a year, and I'm getting now 3% less on my commission. What am I going to do? How am mm -hmm. I going to? So what's the answer? So we affordability to transact is going to be a driver moving forward. So either a team leader is going to provide affordability to transact, or a broker is going to be providing technology options that are affordable to transact. CRMs do not generate leads, people. Right. Okay. CRMs are not lead gen. You have to have an ecosystem to feed that CRM, a machine. So if you don't have the machine feeding your database, moving forward, you can't sit around and wait for a referral off your referral tree. Because that referral is probably already talked to an agent. Maybe they're in an agreement from three months ago. We have to start building a referral tree. And that means building leads and prospects. So a couple examples of lead gen uh, that agents should be thinking about. The average agent can't afford to do PPC at $1,000 to $1,500 a month. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, there's big teams that can, but the average agent can't, right? So doing things like property blasts that are done through automatic property. We have a system that we do where it's our number one lead gen right now. Agents are spending between about 79 bucks are generating three to five leads every week. And they're mostly homeowner leads that are local, hyper local leads around an actual listing or a listing event. How does that work? So when you think about marketing in a space right now, do you want to market in your business for people that are searching outside your area that may buy a home in California? Or do you want to circle your best area, the area you want to dominate, like a farm and create inbound leads and then also market internally. Yeah. I mean, especially are, if you're looking for listings. Yeah. That's the, that's the future because I live in Carlsbad. So if I'm in Carlsbad, I want to be, I want everybody in Carlsbad to know who I am. I'm going to create a tire blanket around that and not necessarily pay per click. I'm going to create a, 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 a Facebook a business page for Carlsbad. I'm going to do blasts little property blast each week to generate within 15 miles radius or my community dev, de, or zip code. I want to market to everybody in there that when they go on the Facebook, they're seeing me and they're registering automatically. And I'm creating that hyper local homeowner because people are going to buy within that's affordability when lead gen that any agent can afford to do if they have the right system. CRMs don't provide the ability to do that. You have to have a full ecosystem. You have to have, be able to create lead, lead um, funnels, uh, landing pages, squeeze pages, charity events. Um, you want to have a smart number. So when you do flyers or postcards, yeah, smart number captures leads. So That's many agents are sending out postcards without any lead capture, dude. It, it's kills, a, it's me. A jo it kills me. 800 to 900% higher response rate off postcards that have a call capture meaning either a, a little scan or a text code with value. Um, and what kind of value can they add? So like, 
you know, what a lot of agents are going to say, well, what can I, what can the call to action be? Right. So, you know, the obvious one would be what's your home value. And then a second one would be, you know, maybe like, you know, a, a short ebook about something or like previously sold listings in the neighborhood. Something there you go. So when we think about what Nick says, I still get listing alerts, 98 to 99% of engaged consumers that buy or transact will transact with somebody who's giving them a listing alert. Whether it be seller. So sellers sign up for alerts so they see what their neighborhood house looked like. My wife, I got a pool table in my living room because she looked at a listing alert in our neighborhood. Somebody had a pool table in the living room. I went on a conference and I came back and there was literally a pool table in our living room because she saw a pool table and a, a listing alert. So local listing alerts, market reports, these are the drivers of nurture. And then engage, you can't engage as an agent on that. But that's what prospect nurture is by asking questions. The system needs to do that. And the only way a system could do that as a CRM is to have the lead start and finish at the very same spot. Yeah. So like, you know, there's some, because curation is going to be the king right now. Right. So it's the king curating a search, not just content, but curation, like yes. making it so easy giving the consumer exactly what they're looking for because it makes it look like you're just so on top of them individually. And it gives that impression that like, you know, they're the only person that you're working with. People love that individuality, that personalization. It's the key to everything. And so hyper-local, hyper-focused marketing of areas, buying a bunch of general, like in the past leads that come from Google where you're buying county leads because they're cheap. I'm not yeah. going to get that buy side commission like I used to potentially. It's a harder thing. I want hyper-focused leads around value, around specific markets. So I want to dominate areas. I want to dominate communities. I want to be involved in everything to do with that community, but do it in a way that's scalable. And so yeah. you need systems that allow that to happen. So like a Lofty and a few other systems that are out there. So for teams, an agent may not be able to afford to spend, you know, a few hundred dollars a month on a system to do that. So they can could their co-op together a group and share that money with a lender offsetting the cost. Cause mm -hmm. by the way, lenders are going to be more important than ever during this. There has been many comments oh, yeah. about closing costs with lenders. So co-op your business into a unit that helps the consumer transact. You need a lender to transact. You need all these different value props for transactions to happen and educate. So how do you do that effectively? You have to really be the center, the core, the, the real estate agent needs to be the center of the, of this ecosystem. They need to be the light in the middle with the consumer, educate him. That is what our job is. That is what our profession started off as. And that's where we need to get back to. That is the secret to everybody. Be the center of that consumer's engagement. Yeah. And by the way, Eddie Mat Matos in the chat, Here's some two CTAs, guaranteed cash. Well, I wouldn't say guaranteed cash offer for your home. I would say cash offer for your home because if you're going to say guaranteed, then you better have one. So cash offer for your home <laughs> and <laughs> get a list of pre-market properties not available online. So you have to have those, obviously. Oh, Eddie, well, if you have one, then it better be guaranteed. That's all I'm saying. Those um, have been but, around forever, but keep yeah, this in mind, Eddie. People love that stuff because here's the thing. You go to the home to take a look at it and then you say, hey, let me show you what your options are. We can sell it to this guy for X amount, or we can put it on the open market because this is what homes in your area are selling like. You decide. because if And if we put it on the open market and it doesn't sell, then we can maybe go for that cash offer. But it's a great way to get in there for a listing consultation kind of in a backdoor way, you know? Can we, uh, can we just talk about Eddie's comment here? Because I just recently got a a text from somebody that said something like that to me. And I'm like, wrote him back going, did you get permission for me to contact you? You can't, as an agent, you just can't get a list of expired and blast that out anymore. It's illegal. No, but with a postcard, you can do you that. Can. CTA. Yeah. So we and have stop to understand. Waiting, stop waiting for just listen and just souls to send postcards, send those postcards with value that they're not even asking for. Like, oh. like Eddie was saying, or how about this? Go. Uh, this is just something that we have within Lofty. You can go and circle around a listing that happens in the market that's yeah. and not your listing and then postcard around that. Now, we have some automation around that. But the point is, is that agents don't have to wait to create an ecosystem. You can create your own homeowner ecosystem. Yeah. 
So again, to Eddie's point, um, drive the homeowner to transact. It's our job is to convince the homeowner now is the time to list. And it's the job of the agent to convince the renter that it's a good time to purchase. It's not our job to wait for them to make that decision. It's our job to influence, educate, and provide value to that decision. And I'm going to repeat that. As agents, it's our job to create the need and value for the consumer to transact. It's not wait for when they're ready to transact. We're here to serve you. Yep. That's over with. I always say like there's three conversations that, um, you know, that are the most popular in, in this country, no matter what, because there's TV shows around all three of them who got married, who had a baby and who's buying and selling homes. I mean, those are the three most popular conversations that people have when they get together. Um, so start that real estate conversation. So uh, how can yep. people, how can people reach out to you guys? We have a lot of people in the chat saying, take my money. So where <laughs> yeah, can, hey. um, where can they reach you guys for a consultation? Cause a few people have asked. Consultation's critical. So really reach out. There's nothing better than to learn from an expert. We have a series of people ready after this call to t do consultations. Nick's going to give that to you. And what we really want to well, think Kendra about just dropped it in the chat. Yeah. So dropped it in the chat is you want to look at your, when you're in this consultation, look at providing a complete sentence for your business, a complete sentence. Yeah. A value subject, complete sentence. Go ahead, Nick. I know you're going to say something. No, I was just, uh, first, this is a, uh, this really, I saw a few of the comments before. This isn't a, uh, <laughs> we're not trying to sign you up for Lofty. The people that have questions, yeah. please come see us. We can absolutely help you out. If you're already with Lofty, and you're, you had questions about those booths, we've got a free webinar that's a live webinar tomorrow. Um, I'll drop that in the chat as well um, so that you can go to that and you can hear anything that we do about advertising booths, everything that we have there. The main goal of this is to really talk about how we're gonna change what we do day to day to make sure that we're taking on the change that's coming based yeah. off of any lawsuit that comes up. So for us, we have a way that we do that. So excuse us if we're talking about Lofty because that's our ecosystem. That's what we know. And those are the tools that we have. Um, we're happy to tell you more about what we do. We'll absolutely take your money. Um, but we, <laughs> we also want to do it in a way that like, is successful for you. And even if us coming on or us telling you about how we do things, it, even if you're not a Lofty user, you can come to any of our free yeah live webinars and get information you can come to any of the lcas that we're on um because well, we I just want to say give you i can think a lot of times better. you guys get a really big turnout for all of your webinars like we had 1300 people register for this and i and i and i know why it's because whenever we do a webinar you're never selling lofty like you're having real conversations right and like when you do have an example of how it could work you talk about lofty but you're not like giving us a lofty demo and that's super appealing. And and guys, you guys should be taking note of that. So don't go out there and start selling your services. Like this is, you know, this is like Gary Vaynerchuk says, jab, 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 right hook. Like give the value, give the value, give the value, and then ask for the business after they've grown to trust you. Hey, can, can we just uh, transition a couple of things? And I hear what you, everybody's saying here, and I'm not here to sell lofty. I'm here to I've been in this business long enough to ever you know that I care. So one, if anybody wants to reach out to me and compare a tech stack on this call, uh, I'll give you my email. Kendra will put it in. You guys can send me an email. I'll I'll have a conversation with you. It won't even be a sales conversation. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of questions that I can't just can't get to. So if you drop your uh, email, Kendra has my email. email definitely. You? Yeah, they can email me directly. Okay. I'm I'm fine doing that. Can we get to that gear that 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 perfect script that they can use really quick before we end this because. The script that yeah, I and use Nick, post a link to that webinar tomorrow or Kendra. Yeah, please. So this is just a simple script that I've done, Nick. I've done it on lab coats before and I've done it on just just about it, a, a lot of things. And I consider it a really good script for where we're going. So I'm going to do it really quick. And it's the second script. Nothing that you guys have to write down. It's a concept. But I'm going to I'm going to pretend I'm calling you. I don't know you, Nick. I could be emailing you. I could be in a conversation. I've actually used this script at a party. At a, at a Halloween party and got an agent a deal at the party and I want to bet. He picked somebody out and I said, I can get them to buy a house. And I walked up to a random stranger and they bought a house less than two months later from that agent. 
Wow. And that's okay. happened more than one time. So a universal script means it works with anybody at any time, regardless of intent. I could talk to anybody and create value without intent. So this, and it can work on expired, it's FISBOs to Ed's point, anything you're doing on the guaranteed thing, it does not matter. Okay. So I'm going to be, you're going to be my guinea pig really quick, Nick, and I'm just going to call you and just pretend along. Okay. Real quick. Which Nick, right. me? You, Nick. Yes. Okay. Hey, Nick, I just noticed you were on uh, Zillow or I get to say anything and you, you just came yeah. in. And uh, I noticed you were on there and you're looking at homes and such and such. I'm doing some research. For, by the way, I'm Brian. Nice to meet you. Hey, Brian. Hey, the reason I'm calling is I'm putting together a list of homes for you based on what you're looking. I had a really quick question before I did that. And I'll let you go. You're a homeowner, right? Yes. Great. I do a special consultation for homeowners uh, called a list power analysis. You want to analyze your list power versus your buy power. I'm assuming you probably had a list power analysis already. Mm, uh, no. no, you're mine. We're done. I'm consulting with you about that. I'm doing the list power analysis because I know you're a homeowner. I'm putting you on my homeowner path of value, all the things of value I offer. I'm not asking you whether you want to buy that house. I'm not asking you because I don't really care. My job right. is to give you a, an analysis. It's that simple. If yeah. you said I'm a renter, I would have said, great. I do a rent power analysis. I show you what that's what the person at the party said, Nick, I could do with you. Well, I'll show you what your rent power is, your buy power is today versus what it would be five years from now. Have you ever had a rent power analysis? No, I need one. This is great. Yeah. So it's universal because I want to know what I'm talking to. Am I talking to a homeowner that may or not may not transact? That's a commission guaranteed. Am I talking to a renter that I'm putting on a path and I could value in them the buy long term? I'm putting them on a path that can help me get that commission. I'm building a path to success, a path to home ownership. And our job as agents is to build a path to home ownership for everybody. Yep. That is your job. And if agents were to brand that, so that's a simple script. It's basically, hi, nice to meet you. I'm doing something for you. Quick question. You're a homeowner, right? It's called a corrective statement there or say I'm a renter, right? Mm -hmm. That little corrective statement puts them on a path and they'll always answer yes or no. Every time you get a call and every call you make will be a consultation. You'll never get hung up on. You can put in an email too. Hey, quick email. I had a quick question. I'm sending you some things about our property. Uh, hey, I'm doing a list power now. So have you had one? No, I haven't. What's that? Oh, let me, you, you have a conversation. Just a little yeah, I trick. love that. It's all the way, it's all, you know, in the phrasing. It's all in the phrasing. Because nobody's yeah. ever heard of a list power analysis. Before. It's just a CMA. It just sounds good. Right, right, right. And also, uh, you know, something else that agents can do, instead of saying, let's see what your home is worth, Start saying, let's see how much equity you have in your home. That's a great because one too. That's That means they're going to find out how much money they'll get if they sell, not how much their home is worth. They don't care. If they're going to make more money, then they don't care what their home is worth, right? So, oh, Yep. And another one is, hey, the, the headless hits the market. Do you want to see what the evaluation is? report, Bart says? That's a good idea. That's a good one too. Or if there's a neighbor, how, a house in a neighborhood you're marketing to, you can always say, would you like to see the inside of that house and know why they're asking for that price? Right. Yeah, that's a good one. And everybody likes to see what's in the neighbor's there house. There was an HGTV show around that idea. Yeah, actually, there was. I actually loved that one because he would take sellers into the into the competition. Yeah. And prove them wrong, basically. So exactly. And if you, every agent can do that. It's yeah. like so easy. You can create a landing page for a neighborhood and post it on, on next door if you wanted to in a way that would do that. So, yeah, that's total value right there. Awesome, guys. Hey, uh, Brian or Kendra, drop Brian's email in the chat because people want to message him some questions. There's some questions here that I just can't get to. So, if you want to email Brian, um, you know, go ahead and bother him. He'll get back hey, to you. Don't, I will, I will get back to you. I am going to be in our headquarters in Arizona all week. But I like talking these types of conversations and doing these things. It's what I live for, honestly. Yep. And so, also people want to, um, there are some lofty users in here that feel they're not getting the most out of their system and they want to have a one-on-one -on -one with someone to kind of show them features and how to utilize them. Can, can I just email you with can, that and you can set can, it up? Just email if there's any lofty users in the and they want to do some sort of consult 
uh, me and Nick can work out a, uh, uh, a way to do this in a way around this topic. I probably will do it. We can do an internal one and more one-on-one -on -one as well. So mm -hmm. if they email me or email uh, Nick on this, um, we can make that happen. Um, honest to God's truth. If they just um, come to a webinar around this, mm -hmm. uh, we can do some tricks and uh, it's tips and tricks redesigning yeah. the system. So I'd like, I'd love to do a webinar for any loft user on tips and tricks, Nick off this, off this would be great. Oh, are you talking to me or the other Nick? The other Nick. <laughs> okay. That's so, a good idea. Tips and tricks are great. So if you're a lofty user already, um, a lot of lofty users on the a lot call. of lofty users. So uh, tips and, and go to check out that boost webinar. It is literally the simplest, easiest way tomorrow. The simplest, easiest way. It is our number one used product right now for lead gen. And it has a 70 to 80% re um, boost uh, percentage. So once they do one, they keep doing it. It's oh, inexpensive. It, it works so well. It works so well. So they, kind of like, yeah, like, yeah, sweet. I love it. Hey guys, we got to jump off, but we appreciate um, everybody for being on. It was a lively conversation. Hope you guys got value. I did. I know that uh, you guys probably did too. And uh, Brian and, and, and Nick too. We'll see you guys later. Take care. Thanks, Thanks so everybody.